little bit about the uh, the, the feast itself, okay. and then we'll go into uh, a little bit just about you and how you know your your career and how you got to Howard Payne. Okay. But as I understand it, as I remember it, you pretty much inherited the feast when you took your job at Howard Payne, didn't you? Is that what happened? That's correct. <laughs> about a a month before Thanksgiving, someone reminded me. I think it was Harold Preston called me and my uh, predecessor and said, "By the way." Has anyone told you you're in charge of the community Thanksgiving feast? And I said, what is that? <laughs> and no, they had not. <laughs> so he gave me the brief history about how uh, Roland Gray, former publisher at the Bulletin, and he had uh, gotten together and decided to start this community Thanksgiving feast. For the first, I guess, 10 years, it was held out at the Coliseum. But after we finished building the Maybe Center here on our campus, uh, we moved it here. It's made it a lot easier to prepare the food and serve keep it hot and so it's this is the 28th year for the community Thanksgiving feast and um, it'll be my 20th year to have helped coordinate it. That's incredible and really Sodexo has is, is, is been they and the they, those workers and the and the volunteers who show up are just, they, just key to it. Aren't yeah they? it wouldn't work if it weren't for the support of our food service uh, Sodexo food service and the volunteers and if it I thought about this yesterday. It really uh, is an it's an amazing thing, frankly, because now it kind of runs itself. The first couple of years I was here, I was trying to organize and manage everything and, and assign people to jobs before that day, and, and I realized I didn't need to do that. These people have done this every year, and uh, they know what to do, and so I help promote it, do a little organization, but after that it's the volunteers who show up and our food service who prepare the meals, and it just works. So now I try to stay out of the way as much as possible. <laughs> that's, that had to be a little nerve-wracking, though, at first, to say, arrive on Thursday, on Thursday morning, Thanksgiving Day, and say, did, it, has enough planning been done? Well, it um, was, because first, that's first year especially, because I didn't know what to expect. And uh, a couple of the old heads told me, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. And I think that's important, that the fellowship aspect of it is, is is key. It's not just we're trying to feed the hungry here today. It's it's a fellowship thing it really for people is. Who, who could afford to go and, and, sure. and, buy, and eat a good dinner somewhere. And we'll have people there from all walks of life and people who would otherwise be alone and entire families will come and eat with us or serve. Uh, we have a lot of families that deliver meals to people here in town and it's fun to watch because you see those parents that are trying to teach their children and young people uh, something about service and they're able to do that in a, a couple of hours on Thanksgiving Day and several of them have, like my family in fact, uh, it's become our Thanksgiving tradition. Uh, my boys who have long since graduated from college are coming home just to do this again this year. They, they hate to miss it so <laughs> it's been fun to watch a lot of young people grow up seeing them every year as they come back to serve. So it's become um, a fellowship and a, a meal and a service opportunity uh, that's really grown through the years. And you were showing us this photograph of the, of the two, two sisters who, uh, yeah. who, who you, don't, you don't even know their names, but they came and, uh, right. and, and, and wanted a job. You can always count on a great meal. You never know what to expect from those who come to serve or enjoy the meal. Makes it kind of exciting. Right. Well, tell me a little bit about what your job entails. Is it okay. sort of like jack of all trades? You have a, a lot of things and, under your umbrella. Yeah, there are a lot of hats, but uh, I can boil it down to I get to spend a lot of money. While other people will have to bring it in, the things that I'm responsible for wind up uh, spending most of the money that Harry Payton has. I have uh, purchasing, uh, payroll, human resources inventory management, but between the payroll and purchasing, we uh, do use up quite a bit of the school's budget uh, through this area here. And as you say, anything else that uh, comes along, <laughs> even serving turkeys. My uh, first year that we were doing this, to be honest, I was kind of resenting the fact that I wasn't at my parents' home enjoying Thanksgiving like we always had, right. and was doing this instead. And it's it's not unusual how the Lord will uh, use little children to teach you lessons. Uh, we'd been serving that day and, and there were some people there that obviously needed help and 
my youngest son Chris was probably about six and he was putting rolls on trays, kind of like the girls behind me here. And after it was all over, we were uh, going home and uh, I can, I'll never forget Chris saying, Dad, we sure have a lot more than a lot of folks, don't we? And I looked at him and I felt like I was about this tall. <laughs> and here I was worrying about not getting to have the traditional meal that I wanted, but yet uh, my six-year-old on his own had uh, observed and realized we've got an awful lot to be thankful for. And so I changed my attitude in a hurry about why we do this. It's, it's not about us, it's about serving and enjoying others. That's what makes it so much fun. And that's one of the things about this Thanksgiving meal that uh, it's always been important to me anyway, and that's we want people to be with family and friends that day as much as possible. And if we can provide meals that makes it possible for families to get together and enjoy the day, we're glad to do that. So if people don't want to have to shop and cook and clean and spend all most of the time then just enjoying each other, we're glad to host them here or to, to uh, send meals to their homes. And and the delivery, that you deliver more meals on yeah. Thanksgiving than you, you serve actually at, at maybe Center. Typically about a third of the meals are actually served here on campus. Last year in fact it was 675 and we delivered 1,260 meals uh, that went off campus. So um, a lot of people like to eat at home with their family and that's great. We enjoy helping them do that. And they probably appreciate the, the visit. But so many of them probably appreciate the visit from you know, maybe homebound. And, well, you're uh, exactly right. And particularly those families that do it together, uh, I encourage them that if the people they're delivering to are open to it, stay and spend a little time. And I've heard several stories through the years of people who realized that they were probably the only person they saw that week. And so they enjoy getting to talk to the volunteers, particularly those who have children with them. Not everyone wants to stop and talk, but a lot of them do, and it makes it even more special for those families who get to do that.